I want to go back a little bit because we skipped over some of your Olympic accomplishments. So the first time in 92, you made the Olympic team as a college athlete. And then in 96, you also made the um, Olympic team. But even before this 96 Olympics, you went into the 95 uh, World Championships. What were your mental change between being a college athlete at the Olympic stage and be going into your World um, Championships? So in 92 and 93 was my senior year. So that's when I kind of uh, finished college. I did make the world team that year. I was fifth place in world, my coming out of my senior year. Um, the next year was, and it was, a, it was actually a world record race too. Mm -hmm. So in 95, I mean, 93, Sandra Farmer Patrick and Sally Gunno broke the world record in the race that I was in. And it looked like they were like 10 hurdles ahead. <laughs> and they were like 10 hurdles on the track. So, <laughs> so when you're in a race that fast, you're like, ooh, I need to step my game up. <laughs> um, I was pretty young and all that, but I'm like, okay, this, you, you, these, these ladies are running 52 seconds pretty regular. Well, not regularly, but you know, just to see it and to be involved in it's like, okay, you know, ooh, gotta get gotta get ready to be at that level. Yeah. 94 came around and I really was not as focused that year. It was kind of an off year, no championships. And I had gotten grossly out of shape and um, then started kind of thinking like, I, I'm going to go into 95 and really, really, really hammer it. I'm going to do all the things that I haven't done in the past that, um, and really see where I can take myself in this sport. And if not, then I need to be doing something different. So I actually went into 96 way before that race with a different mentality. I was on that uh, level where I was, it, I was gonna do really well or I was gonna quit and not do it. Mm -hmm. okay? I had had my mind made up, it was pretty simple. So I really did go into that fall like saying, I'm going to make this happen or I'm gonna do something different. So it was the one time that I really had that different mentality of, work ethic. I did, I did say in 92 that I had lost a lot of weight. So that was the one thing I did work on, but I didn't work on a lot of the other things too, that I had mentioned earlier. But, um, so I went into 92 with 95 with a really great, um, uh, mindset of how hard that I needed to work. And, um, uh, I got married at the end of 95, but my husband at the, who was my fiance at the time, he was playing in the NFL and he was super, super, super motivated yeah. as he always is. And I would be eating stuff and he's like, why are you eating that? Uh -huh. I'm like, what? Chicken wings? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I can't get any wings. And run the way you run. And I'm like, okay, well maybe I'm going to get a little bit more focused here. So he really did help me a lot to be like, this is what elite level athletes do. Okay. <laughs> Because I had just gotten away with being talented for so long that um, it was a different way of thinking that I didn't even know that I needed to um, adjust adjust to. So, um, but yeah, so going into 95, I was, um, even the first race out was a really good race for me in that it was one of my fastest openers. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the right track here. Mm -hmm. um, Pan Am, went to Pan Am's, ran well there. And then, um, uh when, by the time I got to Gothenburg, there was not one single doubt in my mind that I was going to lose. Like none. Like I would have bet the bank on every single thing that I had that I was going to win. Not, not even not getting on the plane to go there, but definitely by the time I'm, you know, I've gone through the call room and we're all sitting there putting on our spikes and I'm looking around and I'm like, I think I can beat every single one of these chicks. I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's about to be. I mean, I in my mind, I, it was done. It was a done deal. And so when I lost, <laughs> immediately I was super, super disappointed and devastated. And then when Kim ran over to me and was like, "Look at the clock," and I looked at it and I was like, it didn't even register in my head. I was like, what is this clock saying? Like, it didn't even make sense to me. And I was like, oh, like we ran really fast, mm -hmm. right? And so I was like, okay, all right, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool. And then um, afterwards, leaving that competition going to Zurich, which was the next meet like days later, um, 
I, they were they were dismissing me. And in my mind, I was like, oh, this race wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for me and her. Like we both put, but mm-hmm. that was the first time in my, as an athlete that I realized it is about winning and losing. Okay, don't be fooled. <laughs> it is definitely about winning and losing. Okay, yeah. and, that, and that's not to say that, um, you know, if you don't feel like you can win, don't try. But I'm, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to get your feelings hurt if you think that they interview second and third place winners. <laughs> <laughs> let me just let yeah. you know that. It doesn't even okay, matter if you just broke, broke the world record or not. You can't no, say they don't care. Nobody cares. You did not win. You lost. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but it was cool. And, you know, it was so funny. I'll tell you a secret. So <laughs> after the race was over and everything had calmed down, I actually requested to see the... Um, the FAT time, you know, like the whole, the yeah. timing. Cause I was like, you know, like, I don't want them to come back an hour later and be like, you know, we made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm telling you my PR before that meet was 53, six. I ran a whole second faster, but I'm telling you it was, it was the mentality. And that's why I try to tell people, don't worry about the times because if your, if your main mission is to win, the time is going to come. Mm-hmm.